mist and now mist juniper. The whole philosophy of user experience being the new uptime came from customers such as you. You are the folks who have guided us, who have helped build this company. And I always say, this company and the AI-driven enterprise as Juniper is all about being built by you, for you. What does that mean? And I'm very, I'm, for those of you who know me, I'm very, very clear in my philosophy. What does that mean? Number one, we are on a mission to unleash the network for the next decade. You all, I request your humble support to be on this journey with me. No, I'm not going to give you any coding exercises right now. But I'm definitely going to be coming to you for guidance. Because the second part about our philosophy as we drive user experience is very simply, when you look at us, when you look at my team, when you look at Sudhir, Tom, Sunalani, Sanjoy, Jacob, even our CEO, Rami, even our CIO, for us, we want to be a part of an extended engineering team. That's the way it works. Now, as I set the stage for user experience, what is extremely critical is as you drive user experience, as you drive a level of assurance which is unheard of in the industry, you cannot just do it on parts of the network. You could start with Wi-Fi, extend to wired, go to SD-WAN, and to the cloud. You have to be able to look at everything across the network, which is what we refer to as client to cloud. There's a key reason when I speak about user experience and I speak about client to cloud, I bring up. And that came from one of our customers who's actually sitting right here today, and he's going to share some of his experiences. They said, Sujay, it is fine when you speak about user experience. Let's say, where's Leslie? I always, oh, Les, again, she's on email while I'm speaking. Can you guys believe it? <laughs> anyway, OK. <laughs> Leslie, if she has a problem while she's trying to connect to the network, she can call network IT, and they can try to do something about it. But then, as that erstwhile company once told me, three years back, Brian, or maybe four years back, Sujay, a user can complain, but a robot, when it fails, it doesn't complain. It stops working. As that robot stops working, 10 other robots around it stop working too. And in less than five minutes, you've just taken down a distribution center and probably impacted 25 to $50 million of business. This is the business why assurance becomes so critical. Client to cloud, fully assured. But as you start embarking on this journey for client to cloud, there are two things which become extremely critical, and I mean it. Number one, it's all about a cloud-native architecture. I know everybody in this room is like, okay, man, here he go again. Yet another cloud-native architecture. But let's just speak about very simple principles. We were the first ones in 2015, 2016, Brock Friday sitting right there. He said, Sujay, over my dead body, will you write monolithic code architectures again? What are those architectures? By the way, he's the one who came out with that in 2004 because he was the co-founder of Airspace too. But ignoring that, what was those architectures? Monolithic architecture put on a controller. And then Brad, when crack happened, sorry, Brian, when crack happened, you couldn't do much about it. You had to upgrade that whole code on the controller. A microservices-based architecture which we introduced was very simply, you disaggregate all the functions into many task workers. And they all are working. One is association, one is authentication, one is DHCP, one is location, one is guest. You start looking at these, and as they start working, if they have a problem, you just change that part of the function out. You patch it up, you're done. Your service mic does not get impacted. That was the first most important thing about a cloud-native architecture. Just a raise of hands if I can. How many of you remember Crack, K-R-A-C-K? -A OK? Keep your hands raised if you were able to remediate that issue in a week. So you fixed it in a week. Any raise of hands where it took you months to remediate the Crack issues across your network? And you're not the only ones. There are many. Shayad, it's OK. I'm not going to call out who you work for. But now you're on the bright side of Miss Juniper, so you're fine. But if you look at the crack issue, when that happened, 
We have customers who were trying to remediate crack, not for weeks, not for months, but for years. The Miss Juniper universe of crack was remediated in less than eight hours globally. Welcome to the cloud native architecture. The second thing which I always speak about, and many of you know this, we say Christmas comes to Miss Juniper every Wednesday. Because guess what happens every Wednesday? There's a production push on the cloud. This is a cloud native architecture. The second part is to deliver on that client to cloud, that assurance, that maniacal assurance, beyond cloud native, you also need a well-stocked AI toolkit. It's extremely critical. But there are certain things I just want to make sure we understand. To be able to leverage AI, I mean, there's a lot of AI washing in the industry. Uh, we frankly feel honored that we have the partnership with customers and prospects such as yourself and are guided well by industry analysts who keep us honest on what's happening. But this is one key difference which is very important. AI for us was built from the ground up. If you think about a Tesla, it was built from the ground up. Where is Sudhir? Sudhir just recently converted to a Tesla after five years of convincing him. But if you think about it, it was built, Taran, from the ground up to be an EV. Okay? You cannot, there are many amazing cars, whether you are a Toyota, Honda, Benz, BMW, you take your pick. You cannot put an iPad on these cars and call it an EV. It has to be built from the ground up. So when that AI toolkit is talked, Bob Friday built the architecture from the ground up to be AI driven. Now, as we started looking at this, we introduced the first network assistant to the industry, Marvis. How many of you have heard about Marvis, if I can just get a raise of hands? Well, wow, that's pretty cool. Maybe after the session, we'll talk, and I will give you the science that went behind the naming of Marvis. Some of you may know it already. But as you start looking at Marvis, the key part, why we did this, was if you speak to Bob Friday, to explain to him what is AI in a sentence, he will say, I train the machine to think like a human being. I train the machine to sit down with network IT and huddle together to solve a problem. That's Marvis. When you start talking to Marvis more and more, you can ask very simple things. I mean, many of us have had these you know, issues happen in a network. We all huddle together. There's a conference call. We suddenly find out that we don't even know where the problem is. We don't know what's the blast vector. We don't know who's impacted. Simple questions, difficult answers. Call up Marcus, bring, Marvis, bring it in and say, hey, how's my network doing? You can ask, walk up to Marvis and say, hey, Taka is complaining in Japan. What's going on with his issue? Simply said, Marvis comes and says, having a roaming issue, great. Now, this is something, by the way, we, I know we had some ServiceNow folks uh, in the audience and they were moved up. Thank you so much, hi Sanjeev. So if you think about it, this is something which we learned from ServiceNow. This is where I say company built based on the feedback we get from customers. They had this program, and please allow me to say it, about a program called Race to Zero. And this was how do you maniacally reduce the trouble tickets from over 100 per month to they wanted zero. I was a startup. I said, yes, I can do it. We are down to at least two or three, so that's not bad. But fundamentally, they were the ones who said, train Marvis, that every morning, all I want to say is, how many unhappy users are there in your network? You know exactly, and you start getting proactive, right? You start getting proactive and trying to address these things. So if you think about Marvis, it was literally bringing, it as, bringing AI as an interface where you have a digital concierge sitting next to you, helping you with what's going on. We're not going to talk about all the backend stuff it does. I'll leave that for Sudhir when he comes for his demos. But now, people ask and say, AI, really? Is your AI real AI? And I say two simple things. Number one, when you, Christian, have an issue on your wireless network, or a wired network, or an access network, or now SD-WAN, when you call Juniper, 
customer support. The first person who takes care of that call is Marvis. This is a religion in our organization. And if Marvis is not able to answer, if it's able to answer the question, fantastic. If Marvis is not able to answer the question, here is another huge change which we have done in our organization. The data science team is co-located with the customer success team. So what happens now? Marvis is not able to answer the question, it gets es escalated to customer success. The customer success person sits with the data science team, and as the customer success person is remediating the problem, the data scientist is modeling that problem back into Marvis. This is AI-driven support. I know this slide may become a bit difficult to understand sometimes, but this is the way we track the efficacy of Marvis. Fundamentally, in very simple terms, many of you have seen the growth of Juniper Mist. I mean, Rami, our CEO, just spoke about enterprise being our largest vertical in Q1 within Juniper. But think about it. Our number of network devices under the Mist cloud have gone up not 100 times, not 1,000 times, not 10,000 times, way beyond that. But here's the best part. Number of customer success engineers, less than 10% compared to two years back. This is AI-driven support. So when I hear about, hey, you know, I was just here and another company came in which is orange in color, another company came in which has this blue thing in their slides. They said the same thing. And I just say, okay, why don't you go and ask them how much do they use their own AI engine to troubleshoot their problems? Then we'll have a discussion. So very simply, and I'm totally, totally, totally out of time, but here's something which I wanted to say. I started this discussion with client to cloud. I spoke about things you probably already know. Cloud native, AI driven. But here is the most important part. I am on a mission. My team is on a mission. Our CEO is on a mission. Our CIO supports us on that mission. And many of you in this room, I know who have been our customer supporters on this mission. But this mission is about a journey to unleash the network for the next decade. Whether it's Wi-Fi, Shahid, we need to start looking at SD-WAN. Yes, Wi-Fi wired, that's old news now. We need to start looking at that. But as we go over this journey, I really humbly request you all to be a part of this journey. Because guess what? You know, maybe after 20, 30, 40 years when you're in Hawaii having a drink and you're retired, don't you want to leave the legacy that you assured the network for the next decade? Because let me tell you, people say, ah, oh, that's not for me. Bullshit. That is for you. We are the people who run the network. We are the ones who make these business outcomes happen. And to get this reliability and the agility of Outlook, getting the business services in production, we need to think about the network for the next decade. So with that, I humbly request you to partner with us on this journey.